What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and in this one we are going to be doing another Playmates unboxing. That is right, in this video we will be unboxing and reviewing Playmates Shin Godzilla aka Godzilla 2016. For those of you absurd observers, absurd observers. I'm so distracted by that goddamn bug in the lens that's still there. This bug living in the camera lens. Now for those of you observant viewers out there, you will know that this is not the first time we've unboxed and reviewed Playmates Shin Godzilla, sort of, as their original classic Godzilla line originally launched with a Space Godzilla and a Shin Godzilla. A Shin Godzilla that was so abominable that <laughs> they scrubbed it from their records. It's off their website, it is out of print, you cannot buy it. I am so lucky to still have it. It is the most wonderful figure to ever grace us. This one actually, it's a pretty solid attempt at a Shin Godzilla. Starting with the box, we got the Godzilla logo. Good stuff. All right. We've got that classic Shin Godzilla. That's that creeper Shin Godzilla who pops up and he's standing there all freaky looking, doing this climbing in your windows and snatching your people up. That's that Shin Godzilla. He used to be featured on a lot of the Shin Godzilla billboards back in the day or the cardboard cutouts and stuff. And we had a field day with him because he is so goofy looking. Never in the movie does Godzilla look that freaking goofy with the first of all the gray color palette and that big smile he just looks so silly in this cg render i love it it's so nostalgic it's classic yeah i'm a big fan so i'm glad they used it i think it's fun also good color palette here with the purple color scheme in the box can't remember if that's the traditional color scheme that all their classic godzilla things have but it doesn't matter because it fits the shin godzilla brand i just wish they would swap out the godzillas here instead of just having a 90s godzilla i wish they would swap it out every single figure so that along with the sides of the box being different you also had a different godzilla in the background but there he is, Godzilla. He looks really good here. Other side is just generic Godzilla logo. On the back, you've got the Shin Godzilla. It shows off his pose. He's standing there. He looks pretty good. I'm going to be honest. This one looks pretty good, I think. We have the general Godzilla series description that I talked about in one of my other Playmates unboxings, so I'm not going to reread it. But we also have a description for Shin Godzilla here saying, A bizarre creature emerges from the sea and comes ashore in Japan, where it undergoes a series of evolutionary changes to its body's shape and size. Its final, fourth form, is a horrifying new incarnation of Godzilla. This unique look is from the 2016 film Shin Godzilla. What a wonderful movie. I love this film. It just makes me happy. It just makes me happy. I'm a big Shin Godzilla guy. I love the design and I'm hyped to get this guy out. All right, he comes in two pieces, as a lot of these Playmates ones do. Godzilla and then the tail piece. Shin Godzilla's iconically <laughs> enormous tail. All right, let's get these guys together. Now, thinking about it, I'm really sad that I never picked up, like, the Bandai Shin Godzilla 2016 because I don't know if they sell it anymore. I'm sure if they do, it's probably more expensive. In terms of tail difficulty, this one is on the higher end. This one's a little harder than normal. Okay. I think that's good. Yeah, I'm sad that I never got the Bandai Shin Godzilla 2016. I don't know if it's on sale anymore. I bet if it is, it's probably more expensive, but I bet it would have paired nicely with this guy. What is that pose, Godzilla? I bet it would have posed nicely with this Godzilla. What is this pose? I just wasn't expecting the Playmates to have this much range to get him to, <laughs> to do whatever <laughs> to do whatever he's doing here. He looks like he's... <laughs> Uh, he looks like he's like being exploded away from something like he's been maybe hit with a shockwave or maybe he's doing like a good old-fashioned <laughs> Godzilla tail slide. Well, that's good stuff. We always like a good Godzilla tail slide. Well, sometimes the weirdness of the Playmate sculpts pay off and that's one of the cases. Let's see if we can get that leg to do a full 360. Ah, yep, we got it. We got it. That might be one of the first Playmates Godzillas to be able to accomplish a full 360 with both legs. And his feet do 360s, and his little teeny tiny Shin Godzilla teeny arms do 360s, and his head does a 360! Damn, this is the review of 360s. And the tail does a 360. Nice, that's good stuff, man. I guess we're on the topic of articulation, so we'll talk about articulation. It's actually a fairly decently articulated Shin Godzilla. Now, I am seeing that there are two obvious points, I would say three obvious points of articulation to add to this figure. What we have is one, we've got a ball joint here, 
like I said, you got a lot of range with it. So one, two, so two, three for the other leg as well. They can kick out all the way. Four, five for these feet that spin. Six, seven for the little teeny arms. Eight for the head. And that's all. Now, the other points of articulation that I think are fairly obvious, I think some people might want like some sort of articulation in the arm itself, maybe at the elbow. I wouldn't. Shin Godzilla doesn't really do much other than just keep his arms up to his side, which I've always loved. I'm a big fan of Shin Godzilla's design, man. It's one of my favorite. Godzilla's designs just because it's so weird. I really like it. It's weird in a not 98 way. It's weird in a way that I know some people would say, no, it's even worse than 98. For me, it's weird in a way that it's recognizably Godzilla. It just looks like, like a little kid designed him in some regards, but in a really good way. He looks frightening in the movie and I like him. But anyways, the points of articulation that are very obvious is there's literally a crease here where this is not the same piece of plastic as this. This is a more rubbery piece, tip of the tail, than this guy, which is a little bit more of a soft vinyl plastic. I mean, this is a soft vinyl plastic too, it's just softer. But there is a split right there where the two plastics fuse together, and that's such an obvious point to add another point of articulation. You could add another one right here where you've got this bend, which would give you even more articulation, and then the jaw. I would give the jaw some articulation. Now, I think one of the reasons that they didn't give him the next two pieces of articulation in the tail is because they were trying desperately to avoid their mistakes last time. I think that they were really, really trying to avoid those mistakes, but eight points of articulation is actually pretty solid for a Playmates figure. In terms of the sculpt, I think it's decent. Okay, I think it's pretty good. Now, this one suffers on a whole nother degree than most of the Playmates Unrendered Disorder. That's the official diagnosis here. That's Dr. D-Man's diagnosis. This is Playmates Unrendered Disorder. Just the tip of the tail is like incredibly unrendered, incredibly undetailed. Moving through the tail, you're still getting undetailed. You get into this next piece of soft plastic. Now we're getting a little better. We get into the hard plastics, and for once on the Playmates figures, the hard plastics are actually outshining the soft plastic. Because even going through the legs, the hard plastics aren't looking horrible and then the feet get really unrendered again. Maybe that's just because the paint is so matte, whereas everywhere else it's so glossy, so it highlights every bump and crease and crevice a little more. Now the dorsal spines look fantastic. They look great. I think they look really wonderful. They've got a great texture to them. They really pop. And that's because they are rubber, which is good. That way, if you drop him, he's not going to explode. So it's always good to have rubber dorsal spines. The arms are very soft plastic, almost rubbery-esque, where you can really Really get them into bending positions. That's good stuff for the articulation. And then the head is another soft plastic head where you can, in fact, pinch and open wide the mouth. That's fun. I always appreciate that. The head, again, gets into that unrendered disorder. Looking at him head on, he actually looks pretty all right. He retains his bowling pin-esque stature. It's not as exaggerated as it is in the movie, but that's kind of actually a good thing. Overall, I'm not impressed with the sculpt on this guy, but I do appreciate the areas of detail that there are that are well sculpted. The head does have this bumpy, rumpy texture which I think is very interesting. Not very accurate to the movie, but I appreciate it. The teeth actually look really wonderful. It looks like they are individually sculpted, which shocks me, and they're painted pretty well. One error is that Shin Godzilla does not have a tongue. Shin Godzilla doesn't have a tongue, Playmates, but this one doesn't really either. I mean, it's just painted a little like a tongue, and it's a little tongue-shaped, but it's not terribly well-defined as a tongue. The areas around the eyes look really good. Getting onto the body, he looks mostly pretty decent running down through the neck. You can see the iconic Shin Godzilla Godzilla neck thing that he's got going on, almost like gills, but I don't know what it's supposed to be. But you can see that's going on here. It bleeds into this chest bone, which looks pretty good. The actual chest itself, I would say, is the best textured on the figure. It looks really solid, especially for a low-end toy. I was never impressed with the Bandai 2016 Shin Godzillas. That's why I never got them. And if I'm remembering correctly, based on the pictures that I saw, they also suffered from that issue, from just generally looking unrendered, although I guarantee it would look better than Playmates. Going into the rest of the body, his legs look pretty decent. His feet look not great. Great. This one, again, it really suffers from that Playmates issue where they always like to pose their Godzillas with the legs out. So you have to pose him in this walking position specifically. Otherwise, you're going to expose the fact that there's giant gaps on the bottom of the feet. There are giant gaps down there that look really bad. His feet are designed to stand in one specific pose and you can't have him in any other position. Otherwise, it'll expose that fact. Getting into the tail pieces here, they look mostly okay. Like this first chunk looks all right. The next piece, the piece that you plug, looks pretty good except god look at this 
ugly way you plug them in, this horrible little circle here that just shows where the two pieces are plugged in, it allows you to do this, to bend the tail, so I get why it's there, but it looks so ugly. The other Godzilla figures didn't need to do that, and they still have better tail articulation. And then the tip of the tail looks pretty all right. It is so just mushy that you can't really make out any of the wonderful details in the tip of the tail. Where this figure actually shines is in the back spines. I really like the spines running down the tail and up through the back. I think they look really wonderful, especially once we get into the back. Like I said, they have just fantastic texturing. They are the best piece of this figure for sure. As far as the paint job goes, he is mostly a black color, which is good. That's how he is in the movie. Not gray like that weird render would make think. He's very black in the movie, and so I appreciate that he's got a very dull black look. It's very glossy on the hard plastics, and then it gets very matte on the soft plastics. The red streaks throughout are really great. The tail piece looks pretty good. I like the red highlighting. I wish it was more consistent throughout the figure. It gets pretty decent when you get into the hard plasticky piece of the tail. And then you move into the rest of the body where it looks really solid on the legs. And by the way, when I say like really solid, looks really good, I am comparing it to other Playmates figures because as we'll see when we do the figure comparisons, this guy does not hold up against most. The back spines look the best. Those have the best red paint job applied. They look really great. And then the chest looks pretty decent with the red running through it and onto the neck. I wish it was more consistent up through the neck and kind of up towards the jaw like in the movie. The teeth look really good. The tongue on the inside of the mouth looks decent even though the fact that Shin Godzilla doesn't have a tongue. And then the eyes are actually pretty solid. He's got those beady little white eyes with the black pupils. And although mine has a very derpy face where it looks like one eye is sinking down from the other, on the side profiles, each one looks pretty all right. I do see some quality control issues on this guy. Like I've got this enormous paint blotch right there. It's like a scratch of white paint. And then on the back here, this piece of the tail is not really connecting to the back very well. It looks like it's about to split off and break in a way that seems irreparable. Like you're gonna have to be busting out the hot glue if that piece breaks, which would be unfortunate. Now I am tinkering with him right now off camera and I'm noticing that unless you have his tail pointed basically straight up like this, due to the way that they have his legs posed, maybe I'm just setting them up a little wrong, but due to the way that they have his legs posed, and I'll keep tinkering with him just to make sure, it seems to me that because Playmates loves to do that Playmates thing where Godzilla always is in the walking position and you gotta have the feet pointed just right and stuff, the only way he can evenly distribute his weight is if you have the tail pointed straight up like this, which actually takes up the least amount of shelf room, but does mean he cannot stand up at all with his tail at full stretch because the weight will no longer distribute evenly and he will fall backwards or to the sides. So you need him to be like this. What makes this figure so special is the figure comparisons. As I said, Playmates was so mortified by the way they were drugged through the dirt and and beaten against the rails? What's the expression? They were beaten the hell up over the fact that they released one of the most abominable figures ever to grace the shelves. This Shin Godzilla that they thought was actually a solid attempt at a Shin Godzilla who also needs to stand in an even more exaggerated tail position, although his weight is distributed more evenly. This Godzilla is actually somehow heavier, even though this one's the bigger of the two. This one is the more physically imposing one. He's also way longer, like way longer. Even with the two Godzilla's tails stretched, the original release's tail is significantly significantly longer, which actually is more movie accurate because Godzilla's tail was so enormous in that movie. But it's not because they did good work on this figure. It's because when they purchased the rights to Shin Godzilla, they actually, if I'm not mistaken, they actually purchased the rights to NECA sculpt on Shin Godzilla, which actually meant that they just got to basically import NECA's Shin Godzilla, reuse the asset, dumb it down for their collection, and then release it. And it looks horrible. The faces on these two guys alone tell the story in a way that words cannot express. One of them looks like the Godzilla from Shin Godzilla. One of them <laughs> one of them looks like that cousin you hope doesn't get invited to the family reunions. They, they're just is like night and day. Actually, if I was to say, and I know this is going to be a wild thing to say, there are some better sculpting elements on the original release, such as the feet, some of the leg texturing, the actual chest texturing, the full body of it, even getting into the tail. The tail itself has better texturing, where this guy really, really, really fell apart was in the really clunky tail execution where it looks bad pretty much no matter what you do with it. And the face, the face killed this guy. If he had this face, I think that history would have been much kinder to this Godzilla. People would have forgiven so many of the other issues with it because again, there's a lot of good detailing. Like the tail piece is pretty well detailed. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Again, it's not because they did good work. It's because they used someone else's work. They just in a way kind of stole some other people's work. That 
that's another reason that this was so dragged through the mud because they basically stole someone else's work. So here, at least we're getting an honest attempt at a Shin Godzilla. It's their own actual attempt, and that's why it instantly justifies its existence. It stands apart from the others in a way that it needed to. The paint job on this re-release is also significantly better. It is so much better than the original release, which looks horrible. But only one of them is iconic, and that's the original release. Now, while we're at it, we might as well compare him to the actual NECA Shin Godzilla release. Here's the two of them standing next to each other. NECA is about the same size. They're about the same. And even from back here, you can instantly see which one just outshines the other in terms of the much more brown black coloring of this guy, the way that the red is streaked all the way throughout, the way that it's just handled with so much more care and dedication than the original. Even though, if you'll remember, this NECA Shin Godzilla is one of my least favorite NECA Godzilla releases ever. I don't think it looks very good. I think it looks distractingly not good, especially in the face. No wonder Playmates didn't have a good face. They didn't use a good face model in the first place. I actually think that this guy has a better head sculpt than this guy, even though it's so much more unrendered, it just looks more like the Godzilla from the movie. But there's the two of them together. Now, I just wanted to get this guy out because he's very nostalgic to me. My very first SH Monster, it's Godzilla, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Or it was the very first one I unboxed anyways, because I think at this point I had a 1964 Godzilla as well. But this is the SH Monster Shin Godzilla with the actual accurately sized tail. Next to Playmate's teeny tiny little Shin Godzilla, the SH-1 is much bigger, much more physically imposing, and it just, like, obviously it's gonna look way better. It's gonna blow the Playmates out of the water in every single regard. Even little things like painting the extra toenails on this guy, whereas here they're just left black. Even little things like that just make the SH-1 so much better on a way that Playmates could never ever hope to be. But there they are. <laughs> The one downside to this guy that Playmates actually kind of gets the upper hand on is that this guy is so fragile and breakable. Oh my god, I hate getting him out. I made stop motion movies with him back in the day and it was always scary because his spines are so delicate that you always feel like they're just going to go into a thousand pieces. To end off our figure comparison segment here, I figured we'd show off Playmates Shin Godzilla next to Godzilla 2021 from Godzilla vs. Kong because it's Japan's most recent Godzilla next to America's most recent Godzilla up to date. I know minus one is about to change that, but here they are standing next to each other. They look pretty great. Actually, these do scale really well together. They look really nice together. And of course they would. They're from the same company. These two should look good together, but they do. These would be a fun fight if you're like a guy who wants to do a Godzilla battle. These would be a fun one to do Godzilla battles with because you don't really risk breaking either of them by just bashing them into each other, even though this guy would be a beam battler, but it is playtime. You can do whatever you want. This guy wins, by the way. Unless Shin Godzilla does the evolution thing and fly and whatever else he can do. Who knows? Overall, I'm pretty happy with what Playmates has done here. I think they have achieved redemption. That's a good thing. It was important for them to achieve an redemption after what they originally did to Shin Godzilla. As iconic as that one is and how this one will never live up to that legacy. No one will remember this guy. At least they will remember the other one. But I would say Playmates did redeem themselves with the Shin Godzilla. They gave it an honest attempt. They did a really good job on that honest attempt. As far as Playmates is concerned, this is a good figure. On a Playmates scale, I would give this guy a 7.5 out of 10. I think he's pretty solid. I just think he's a little untextured and unrendered in a way that he really doesn't need to be. Now, if the Bandai was involved, I actually do think the Bandai would be better. Bandai does set the bar a little higher and make me question, why am I so nice to Playmates when I review them? But then again, I try and review each figure on its own scale according to its own brand. In the grand scheme of Godzilla, this guy's probably like a four out of 10, I guess. Like he's worth the price at least, I'd say. 10 bucks, so he's not gonna break the bank. That's just for the record how I review toys. I try and review each figure on a scale of its own brand rather than all against each other. All right, I wanna give a huge thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon. If you wanna support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community and more. By supporting the Patreon, you are directly supporting this channel and making sure I can keep making videos like this for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.